Hi everyone, and thank you for being here today. My name is Janelle and I'm a Masters of Pharmacy graduate from King's College London. My research project compares the in vitro performance of the handy inhaler and the Respimat soft mist inhaler under inhalation profiles simulating COPD. COPD is an umbrella term that covers conditions like emphysema and chronic bronchitis. Patients typically present with persistent breathing difficulties and limited airflow. This study looks at teotropium, which is a common drug treatment option in COPD. It's a long-acting muscarinic antagonist that mainly targets the M3 receptors, primarily found in the conducting airways. Consequently, disease management is very much dependent on the drug deposition profile achieved. In this study, we wanted to look at the delivery of teotropium via two different types of inhalers, namely the handy inhaler dry powder inhaler and the Respimat soft mist inhaler. The handy inhaler is breath actuated, which means that it relies significantly on the patient's ability to generate a high enough inspiratory flow rate and enough turbulence in the capsule chamber to emit and deaggregate the full dose. This may be a problem in more severe COPD, where patients may not have the pulmonary function to overcome the device resistance. On the other hand, inhaling too quickly might cause inertial impaction in the mouth and throat, which means that most of the dose gets swallowed instead of reaching the receptors in the airways. From a quality perspective, this also means that the hand inhaler is more susceptible to variations in the inhalation maneuver, which ultimately affects dose efficacy. The Respimat is designed to manage these issues by independently mechanically generating a slow moving aerosol where droplet size and aerosol velocity are controlled, two factors that play a key role in an inhaler's drug deposition profile. Therefore, the two main objectives of this study were to simulate breathing profiles that reflected inhaler use by COPD patients as closely as possible, and then to use these profiles to assess the performance of the handy inhaler and the Respimat. So since our intention was to replicate in vivo inhaler use as closely as possible, the decision to simulate inhalation profiles was a priority from the get-go. The British Pharmacopeia calls for testing inhalers at a constant flow rate for a duration that produces an inhalation volume of 4 litres. Based on this method, this is what the typical square wave profile might look like. But patients in real life cannot physically breathe at a constant flow rate, and the 4 litre volume is also unrealistic for COPD patients. A volume of 2 litres has been found to be likely to be more representative of this particular cohort. Three breathing profiles were generated for each inhaler for mild, moderate, and severe COPD, as defined by the GOLD 2019 guidelines. These breathing profiles were generated using breathing parameters obtained from published literature and then replicated using a breath simulator. And here we have the final inhalation profile for the handy inhaler and the Respimat. Data from patients using the Easy Haler by Azuz et al. was used for the handy inhaler profile parameters since the Easy Haler and the handy inhaler have a similarly high internal device resistance. The profile slopes were then scaled to reflect recorded patient inhalation profiles from Hamilton et al, giving us the three composite profiles that you see here. The Respimat profiles were produced using data from a study by Bauer et al on nebulized drug delivery, since the Respimat and a nebulizer are very similar in terms of operation. A study by Brand et al also demonstrated an approximately tidal inspiratory flow profile when patients inhaled using a Respimat hence sine wave profiles for the Respimat. When using both inhalers, clinicians typically advise patients to hold their breath for 10 seconds after inhalation. This was incorporated during testing as well to allow any aerosol particles to settle as they would in a patient's airways. And this is just a little something to illustrate how different the final product looks when compared to the pharmacopoeial square wave recommendation. Emitted dose analysis was done to assess how much of the full dose is actually being emitted under each simulated disease stage and to look at delivered dose uniformity. This was done using dose uniformity sampling apparatus and the breath simulator shown in the schematic here. The inhaler was fired into the Dusa tube, which contains a filter and any drug caught on the filter was washed with solvent and then analyzed via HPLC. To look at the aerodynamic particle size distribution, we used a next generation impactor where the fired sample is separated into decreasing size fractions on the basis of particle inertia. 
using a compressed air inlet manifold and mixing inlet allowed us to merge a time variable inhalation profile with a constant airflow that was maintained throughout the NGI. For respinat testing, the NGI equipment was stored in the fridge for at least an hour beforehand to minimize solvent evaporation when firing at ambient temperatures. With emitted dose testing, it was expected that the handy haler emitted dose values would decrease to a larger extent in more severe COPD, since the handy haler largely relies on the patient's inhalation maneuver. Though the decreasing trend seen in the handy haler EDs from the mild to severe profiles is not significant, uh, using a 95% confidence interval, suggesting that the handy haler is capable of good dose reproducibility across simulated disease severities. The respimat emitted a much more consistent dose than the handy haler across profiles as expected, and in essence, both inhalers perform similarly under simulations of more severe COPD. As expected with the handy haler NGI analysis, a significantly higher tetropium assay is seen in the earlier stages of the NGI with the mild profile. This confirms that inertial impaction is more of an issue in higher flow rates, which is also something that was seen by Azuz et al. And the fact that the severe profile gave us a significantly higher deposition in later NGI stages shows us that the handy haler can produce a good deposition profile uh, within a range of simulated peak inspiratory flow rates. For the respinat, no significant difference were expected between the deposition profiles for the three severities, and none were found. Uh, looking at the severe profile, the unexpectedly high assay in the throat and mouth could be due to leaving the NGI body to warm up in ambient conditions for too long before firing. So the hygroscopic growth from the higher relative humidity may have given us larger particles that deposited early. We also looked at the key parameters using SITDAS um, and is the fine particle dose here that is particularly relevant for patients since this is the one that ultimately determines clinical benefit. There were no significant differences between the two inhalers or between disease states, which tells us that the fine particle dose is fairly unaffected by changes in simulated peak flow rate for both devices. But what is interesting here is that the fine particle dose values might be fairly similar for both inhalers, but when evaluated in relation to the labeled claim, the respimat shows us a much higher fine particle fraction i.e. the fraction that makes up the respirable dose. This makes the Respimat a much more efficient device in comparison. Comparing the pulmonary deposition profiles of both inhalers against one another for each simulated disease severity, we can immediately see that the handy inhaler consistently gives us a much higher assay in the mouth and throat region compared to the Respimat, presumably due to inertial impaction. Looking at the mid to later stages of the NGI, we can also see that the respimat produces a higher deposition here than the handy halo, which was expected. But looking at the bigger picture, it is possible that the nature of the formulation itself could have affected the deposition profiles. Um, Interparticulate particulate interactions may have hindered powder flow, despite using lactose as a carrier particle, uh, giving us bigger agglomerates that deposited early in the mouth and throat stages. And just to conclude from our testing, we found that both inhalers are capable of successful reproducible drug delivery under in vitro testing for simulated mild, moderate, and severe COPD. However, the Respimat does excel as the superior device when it comes down to device efficiency. Uh, the scope of this project was limited to breathing profiles that were generated based on the limited current published literature. So these profiles were very much an approximation of breathing patterns that we see in COPD patients. More work could be done around recording inspiratory profiles from patients using these inhalers and then generating in vitro parameters based on this data. The breathing profiles were also designed primarily based on peak inspiratory flow rate and inhalation volume. The effects of varying pressure drop could also be investigated and potentially give us guidance for more realistic in vitro testing of orally inhaled products in the future. And here are some of the references used for this presentation. Thank you very much for watching and please feel free to get in touch with any questions. Special thanks to Intertech Melbourne for partnering with King's to make this research possible and to the DDL committee for having me this year. And of course, to my supervisors, Professor Ben Forbes and Mark Parry for your support and guidance. Thank you.